in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, we hear Jesus commanding us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, to love our enemies. First let us understand the context for this teaching of Jesus. Those crowds that heard Jesus speak, they would have known the old rabbinic saying that you mustn't do to others what you don't want them to do to you. Jesus takes this, this negative precept that we are not to cause harm and gives us a more demanding command. It isn't simply that we are not to cause harm, but we are to actively do the good, actively do good to others. Let us first though use a little discernment. Jesus in no way is saying that we should do good to others in the hope of gaining good in return. In fact, he explicitly says we must do good, we must love with no expectation of return. In fact, we must do good to those very people from whom we expect nothing in return. The very people who do not love us. This commandment goes against every worldly principle. It calls us to be vulnerable, to, to risk being taken advantage of by the world, by the, the devious, the deceptive. It means refusing any worldly judgment when it comes to how we treat, treat others and a judgment of who they are. We are to refuse how the world tells us to protect ourselves in this sense. It means loving others even if they crucify us. For this is exactly what our Lord did. It isn't even simply loving, doing good to others, knowing that there is a risk we will be crucified. It is loving others, expecting to be crucified. Perhaps not physically. Perhaps the persecution that we experience will not necessarily be physical and brutal. But the world will turn on those who behave this way. The world will seek to take advantage of anyone who loves as Christ loved. And when we look at the image of Christ on the cross, this is the very love that Christ calls us to show. And Jesus goes on to say then that we must be merciful, even as our Father in heaven is merciful we must show the same degree of mercy that God shows. Now, of course, we do not have the infinite mercy and love of God. We are finite, limited creatures. Our love, our mercy, can never truly equal that of God. But in our small measure, we should be motivated by God's love. And from the the ocean, the unlimited ocean of love and mercy of God, we may at least share a few drops, a few drops of mercy from God's mercy. In a world where, where evil is creating so much pain, so much misery, what is it that God is calling us to? How are we to respond to so much pain around us? How can we begin to truly show this love, this mercy that Christ calls us to? Well, first, let us remind ourselves that God never stops loving us, no matter how great our sin. When we repent, he receives us. When we turn back to him, he welcomes us. If the perfect God, who is sinless, can show this mercy and forgiveness, can show this forgiveness to sinners, how can we, who are also sinners, who also share 
in this evil, who share in the sin of those we would seek to judge. How can we dare as sinful creatures then to reject anybody? How can we be more stern, more judging than God himself in a sense? Because we are sinners like them. Or do we secretly consider ourselves different, better than the sinners we would reject and judge? Are we like the Pharisees looking down on the tax collector? No matter how corrupt, how, how sinful someone's actions may be, how sinful their outward appearance may be, the image of God is within them. The image of God is within every human being. And God knows our capacity to change, our capacity to be transformed. If we reject, if we condemn others, then we are denying the possibility of repentance. If we know the truth of our own sin and how God has been willing to forgive us, it will show us how we must forgive others when we truly recognize how we have been forgiven. But of course, if we remain arrogant, thinking we are better than anyone, if we haven't begun to then experience God's mercy, because we, we haven't yet reached the stage of seeing our own need of forgiveness, this arrogance will prevent us from experiencing that mercy and forgiveness and then prevent us from being able to show it to others. But this teaching will sound dangerous to some people. It will seem dangerous to the world because it can leave us concerned about becoming vulnerable, vulnerable to the unscrupulous. But that's because we're reading this commandment with a worldly mind. Secular logic blinds us to the truth of Christ's teachings. So long as we try to read and interpret anything that Christ says to us with worldly secular logic, we remain blind to its truth. Worldly thinking blunts our, our spiritual understanding, our spiritual vision, our spiritual sight is blunted by worldly thinking. And this is why we must follow the, the teachings of the Church Fathers, the Church Fathers who teach the meaning of the Holy Scriptures. They who were so enlightened by God's Holy Spirit and given a purity that freed them from worldly confusion and personal opinions. God gave us the Church Fathers, the saints of the Church, to illuminate the scriptures for us. The gospel cannot be united to secular logic. The Christian gospel cannot be united to secular logic. The gospel calls us to love in the face of worldly warnings. When we judge by externals, we know nothing of the, the inner life, the inner struggle of other people. But God sees, and God is merciful. Let us, let us be encouraged. If Christ calls us who are weak and sinful to be merciful, how much more can we know, can be sure, that God is merciful to those who repent? How much more can we hope in God's mercy? For if Christ calls you and I to show this kind of mercy, we who are so limited, we who are so sinful, how much hope can we have in the infinite love and mercy of the perfect God? And if we 
if we learn to live in trust, believing we are in God's care, then we won't feel, fear anything of the world or, or anything it can do to us. And when we are healed, when we are protected from these fears, only then will we be able to show the mercy that Christ calls us to.